Today we're presenting the Powerworld XR940A uh, powered air respirator uh, for welded applications. It's a battery powered uh, filter unit combined with a large view welding and grinding helmet. It's designed to protect the welder from particulate contamination in the welding environment. So we're going to get it out of the box now and have a look at the product in more detail. So this is the unit uh, out of the box now. As you can see, it comes in its own uh, carry bag, uh, quite a nice strong carry bag. Uh, and there's a position on the front of the bag where you can add your name or your clock number so you can identify the unit as your own uh, within the obviously factory environment. So we'll open the bag up now and have a look what we've got inside. So we've got everything out of the bag now, uh, as you can see here, they're all laid out on the table. So we've got the, the blower unit here with the uh, comfort belt, all important instruction manual, uh, air holes which links the blower with the, the helmet, uh, universal charger, you can see here it's got a variety of pins configuration to suit different markets, there's been a UK, European and so on. Uh, the battery unit, uh, this is a Samsung uh, battery unit um, and will give uh, a run time of uh, 11 hours on low speed or uh, up to um, 9 hours on, on the high speed so it covers a full shift. Um, the welding helmet itself, the larger welding helmet, it has its own dust bag uh, as well. You can see large view here and has additional uh, functions on the side so you can use it in grinding mode as well. But uh, what we're going to do now is going to do a bit more detail on the blower unit and the particular features on the, on, on the blower unit. So here we've got the, uh, the blower unit. Uh, it's mounted onto a, uh, a, a comfort belt. The comfort belt is adjustable. Uh, it has a quick release buckle. Uh, you can adjust it up to 15 inches waist size, which is just over 1.2 meters. Um, and just to uh, allow you to position the unit in a really nice position on, on your back, uh, you've got some additional uh, braces here, which just keeps it in a, a nice position on your back. Uh, you can detach those braces uh, if need be as well. Uh, on the front of the unit, uh, you've got a small display panel here, which displays the key functions, the fan speed, um, low airflow warning, low battery warning and block filter warning, an on off switch, and then the uh, filter holder here. If you open the, open the filter holder out, uh, inside here, we've got the main uh, P3 filter and two Additional items here, we've got a spark trap and then an activated carbon pre-filter. Obviously the spark trap acts to just prevent any large uh, sparks or anything coming through and damaging the filter medium. Uh, the activated carbon filter um, again reduces the amount of debris coming into the large filter but uh, because it's activated carbon it helps reduce odors so it makes a more pleasant uh, breathing environment for for the user. The main filter, this is a um, TH3P uh, filter, uh, that gives up to 48 times uh, protection level, a significantly higher protection level than you would get with a TH2 filter um, by a factor of four. So it's four times uh, more efficient uh, than a TH2 filter. So if you're comparing this unit with other units on the market, just uh, have a look at the, the standard of uh, filtering that they're offering to see if it's uh, comparable. So the main filter just drops into the uh, housing here and then clips into the unit there. The battery mounts onto the, the bottom of the unit. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a Samsung uh, based battery, uh, Samsung cells. Uh, the unit just clips into the bottom. It's got its own charging port so you can actually charge if you've got more than one battery, you can charge it off the unit. You don't have to have it connected to the unit to, uh, to be able to charge it. Again, this just uh, clips in 
to the base. Uh, before you first use it, you should charge it for three hours just to make sure it's fully charged. Uh, so that's in, and then the only control we've got is the on off button. If I press and hold this for a couple of seconds, the unit will power up. It'll do a small self test and settle down into its running mode. So I can just demonstrate that now. You notice you've got the bleep and there's an actual vibration there. Uh, and now the unit's uh, running in its lower airflow level, which is 170 litres per minute. And uh, the expected run time at that level is around about 11 hours. If I press and hold the on button again, I can step it up to the high speed setting, which is around about 120 litres per minute and a runtime around about nine hours. To switch the unit off again, I simply press and hold and the unit powers down. Simple as that. Uh, once we've got everything assembled, we'll look at the additional features there in terms of the low airflow and the, uh, low battery warning. So we're just going to have a detailed look at the uh, the welding helmet. As I mentioned before, it's a large view welding helmet, which makes it more suitable for use when you are grinding as well, that you've got a larger viewing area. Um, and it has a true color lens, so the, the colors of your weld and the controls on your machine will appear uh, more realistic. Um, there's four sensors. Uh, in each corner of the unit, which make it really good for uh, TIG welding, uh, and it will operate down to about 10 amps with, uh, with TIG, TIG operation. On the side of the unit here, you've got all the main controls. You've got your main shade adjustment here in the center, and a selector switch. You can select either a shade range of uh, five to nine, or 9 to 13 so you're quite fine control on uh, what shade level you require by the combination of two switches uh, you've got here uh, adjustable sensitivity uh, sensitivity uh, is the how sensitive the helmet is to the changes in the light level and normally you just keep it on the high sensitivity level but if you've got a particularly bright environment, or maybe you've got somebody welding close by to you, uh, you may want to reduce the sensitivity so you don't get the helmet false triggering or flickering um, before you're actually ready to weld yourself. And then on the other side here, we've got a delay function. The delay function is how long it takes for the helmet to clear at the end of the weld. If you're heavy welding, you've got quite a large afterglow which can produce a little bit of glare, you would increase the delay, which just gives you uh, that extra bit of time for the afterglow to die down before your helmet uh, comes back to the light state. And then finally, uh, you've got the grind switch here, weld and grind switch. When you put it in the grind mount, it locks it in the clear state. So without removing your helmet, you can perform grinding operations. Then you can flick it back to the weld mold and, uh, and, and carry on with your welding operations. So if we turn the helmet over now, uh, you can see inside it's fully rigged up to use uh, with, with the respirator. Um, you've got the air duct uh, coming in here that connects to the, uh, the blower unit and feeds uh, filtered air into the front of the face and, and, and down over the face and effectively pressurizes the inside of the helmet with clean filtered air. Uh, You've got a face seal here uh, that fits around and over the head. Uh, it's adjustable for the size and, uh, of, your, of your face by the draw cord. And once you've got it adjusted correctly, you don't need to keep uh, undoing that. There's a D-ring here that allows you just to stretch it forward to slip it on and off over your, uh, the front of your face. The headband uh, is a multi-point adjustable headband. Uh, you've got a padded foam um, forehead band there, lovely and flexible and soft. Uh, two overhead bands, again, these are uh, very soft and fully adjustable for length, so you can get distribute the weight very evenly over your head. And on the back, again, swivel mounted, a uh, tensioner mechanism with a nice soft pad, which makes it a really comfortable uh, helmet to wear. On the side, the mechanism adjusts for uh, 
rake, which is how low the helmet comes down when you're wearing it, how close to your uh, chest. And you can also adjust it fore and aft on the, mech, uh, on the headband. So if you're wearing spectacles, you might want to move the helmet slightly further forward uh, relative to your head, so you've got room for your, your spectacles. So you can do all that uh, with this sort of multi-point harness. So we're going to rig this up to the blower unit now, and you can see everything working together. So we're going to connect the two uh, bits of the unit together and run through some tests. So I've got the flexible holes here. Um, it has a flame retardant covering on it to uh, help protect it in the, in the work environment. And it's a simple bayonet connection onto the blower and the same thing onto the helmet. Simple push and twist to lock. Start the unit up, uh, just press and hold for a couple of seconds, you get a self test and then it goes into the uh, running mode. Obviously, uh, as we saw before, there's some additional warning lights on the unit and I'll just demonstrate how those work. Um, the first one being the uh, blocked filter. So I'm going to simulate the filter being blocked by pacing our instruction manual there over the uh, filter. And what you'll hear is gradually the motor will start to speed up to try and compensate for the loss of airflow. I you hear it now, it's speeding up, it's gradually, it's just trying to compensate for the loss of airflow. And eventually it'll get to the point that it can't go any faster and it will throw up the block filter light. So it's warning now that I've got a block filter, you've got an audible bleep and the unit will start to vibrate as well. So you can feel that on your back, uh, obviously vibrating, even if you can't hear the sound. If I remove the obstruction, the unit will come back down to its normal operating speed and the warning uh, should go off. There we go. So it's come back to its normal conditions. So obviously that was just a demonstration. If it truly was a block filter, you need to remove yourself from the uh, uh, working area and replace the filter before re-entering the working area. So if I just take the connector off uh, the helmet here now, I can now simulate the effect of uh, a restriction in airflow. Maybe there's something blocked in the helmet. You've got some debris. Uh, blocking the air, air duct or you simply somebody's crushed the hose so the hose is restricted so I'm going to partially cover the end of the hose here and you can hear the motor speeding up it's trying to compensate for the reduced airflow and now it's indicating uh, we've got an airflow issue uh, we've got the red warning light on, the audible bleep, and the unit's vibrating as well. If I remove the restriction there, the unit slows down again, back to its normal operating speed. Again, in a working environment, you need to come out of the contaminated area, deal with the issue, whatever it is, before returning back into the, the work area. Then to just switch the unit off, I just need to press and hold the off button for a couple of seconds. There we go, power down. Simple as that. So now I'm just gonna uh, put the unit on, just show you how easy it is to uh, uh, wear the unit. So uh, I've got the uh, optional braces on here at the moment, uh, which makes it a lot easier to put on. Just sling uh, the straps through like that. And then you can bring round the uh, the waist strap, clip that into place, drop the helmet on, adjust your waistband, and say pull the hood over and adjust it there. And then if I just turn around, you can see it's really easy to locate the on-off switch because of this sloping platform here and it's uh, and uh, away we go 
switch off again. 